No matter what kind of music you make, counter melodies are an essential aspect of music production that can be really easy to overlook. So in today's video, we're going to be going over exactly what counter melodies are, why they're important, and how you can use them to start making your tracks more interesting and more memorable. We're also going to go over some specific examples in a few different genres, sort of across the energy spectrum from sleepy lo-fi to heavier, hard-hitting drill, just so you can see how counter melodies can be implemented in different musical contexts. Now, this video is going to be tailored pretty specifically to beginners, but even if you've been at this for a long time, I think there are going to be some useful gems in here that are worth sticking around for so let's get into it let's get the boring stuff out of the way now so that we can get into the good stuff later in the video and if we're going to be talking about counter melodies we should probably know what are counter melodies and if you just look up the definition it's it's not very helpful at all so i'm going to try my best to explain this in plain english at least as best as i can and the way that i like to think about counter melodies is sort of under these like two main categories right where you have complementary counter melodies and conversational counter melodies so let me explain. If a counter melody is just a subordinate to the main melody, that implies that the counter melody shouldn't get in the way of the main melody. So in order to achieve that, we need to find ways for the counter melody to interact with the main melody without stepping on its toes. So on the complementary side, we can think of it as voicings and embellishments and coloring of phrases without dramatically changing the melodic content of that main melody. And I've got some really good examples of that in the examples I'm gonna show you later in this video. But on the conversational side, it's sort of exactly how it sounds, right? Where you want to think of it as a conversation between two voices. You've probably heard of this referred to as call and response, where one voice delivers a phrase and the other fills in the spaces in between. A subtle distinction here though, is that if the counter melody takes too much of a driver's seat, it technically becomes a main melody and then it could be considered more of a duet, but that's just dumb definition stuff. And I think you should focus on making your music towards a feeling and less towards the technicalities. I think a lot of this jargon and definitions and theory is really useful when you're trying to communicate about your music, but it maybe isn't the most important thing to like super nail definitions when you're trying to create music. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. A well-implemented counter melody can give a track entirely new dimension and sometimes completely transform its identity hopefully from a boring, lame track to an interesting and memorable one. So let's take a look at some examples that I prepared just for this video to really demonstrate how you can use these concepts in a bunch of different genres to achieve just that. So I wanna start things off with this really simple sort of sleepy lo-fi introduction I put together this afternoon. As you can see, it's really extremely simple. This is by no means like a finished project, but I just wanted to come up with something that I could quickly demonstrate the concepts of melody and counter melody with. So here in all the projects I'm gonna show you as well today, I've got what I call the main melody in this sort of pinkish color. The percussive elements are all in green. I don't think we're gonna to touch on any of that today. And then in the purple are all the elements that we're gonna be considering the counter melody. So that's gonna be where the bulk of our focus is today. But really quickly, let's walk you through what the components of the main melody are, and then we can talk about how the counter melody is working together with those. Right at the beginning, I've got just a simple keyboard, just a felt piano playing four chords, sustained. Nothing fancy, a couple kind of like jazz extensions, some nice suspensions going on. And then complementing that at the introduction is this guitar that's just plucking a single note. So together, those sort of play through four bars. And then I've got a bass coming in and then a strummed guitar hitting the same chords at the same time as the piano. So without any other elements, this is what our main melody sounds like. So 
So it's nice, but it feels empty. And it would get pretty repetitive after a while if that were the only thing that were going on. So that's a good thing to keep in mind with counter melodies is that they're an opportunity to spice up your arrangement as well as your composition. So sort of by peppering them in throughout the arrangement, it gives the ears something new to focus on and draws attention away from the more repetitive elements. So the first counter melody part that comes in is what I would call complementary because rhythmically it's sort of happening concurrently with the main melody of the guitar part, but it's not extremely divergent from the melodic content. So if we listen to just the guitars together, we hear this purple counter melody is sort of arpeggiating on a different set of notes than what the, the main melody is going on. So again, you can hear that it's moving and it is different and it's, you know, a different flavor, a different color than what the main melody guitar is up to, but it's not stepping on it. They're not clashing. They're not fighting with one, with one another. They have their own space in the frequency spectrum and they have their own space in the rhythm. So they're complementing one another rather than uh, going back and forth or fighting. And so for this example, the one other little bit of counter melody I've added is this additional sort of more lead-like element, though I wouldn't necessarily call it a lead because it's not super developed, it's sunk down in the mix, and it's still sort of interacting with those melodic components in the, the melody that we've already established, so. So you can hear right away that this is occupying a completely different rhythmic identity than the other two guitars are. On top of that, compared to this set, this first counter melody component, they're in different registers, right? So the, the arpeggiating guitar on the bottom is a lot lower and the top counter melody is higher in its register and it's moving a little bit more like a lead melody would, but still not stepping on the toe of the main melody. If we bring all the elements in at a cute little transition and a nice cozy drum beat, and you cannot forget the nature sounds in your lo-fi beats, this is what you end up with. So we're going to flip all the way to the opposite end of the energy spectrum and show you an example of what a counter melody in an orchestral sort of UK drill beat might sound like. I do want to say that I'm making this video in response to a request I received in the comments section. So if you have anything you want to see me cover in a future video, let me know down in the comments. I will be reading every single one and responding to all of them. Really anything that you want to see me go over or try or pontificate on. I would be very happy to do that for you. So please let me know. And if you are finding this video at all helpful, uh, think about hitting that subscribe button. I just passed 100 subscribers. It really blew my mind. Thank you guys for all the support so far. Um, and let me know what you wanna see uh, coming up next on the channel. Quick dis disclaimer, like I said, this video was a request from someone in the comments and he told me that he's trying to make orchestral drill. I myself has, have never actually made any drill beats before. Please excuse that it's not the best drill beat ever, but I do think the concepts for the counter melody can be really relevant for any genre and, you know, especially orchestral drill. So once again, the red is our main melody, purple is our counter melody, green is just the drums. Again, we're not gonna be focusing on those too much. We've got strings leading things off. And again, it's super simple, four beats, four chords, and we've got these strings from BBC Orchestra, a free plugin, highly recommend you check that out. Um, so by itself, here's that main melody that we've got for our drill beat. So that just repeats throughout this arrangement that I've put together this afternoon. And you can imagine that that would get very repetitive and very boring if we didn't do something to switch it up throughout the arrangement and add different things 
again for the ear to latch onto. So the first thing that I turn to is a flute, which is really popular in drill music. And so this is what I would consider, again, a complementary counter melody, where we're not diverging a terrible amount from the main melody's melodic content, but we're also not only following it. So it's not a layer on the main melody, it is its own unique thing. We've got these transition notes. Together, these two melody components sound like this. So now it's starting to get a little bit of movement. There's transition notes happening. There's a little bit of intrigue possibly uh, getting started. Here, I've got what might be a little bit more on the side of conversational, but I still think this might still be considered complementary. But again, these are semantics and the definitions don't matter. They're just umbrellas to sort of think about what you're trying to go after. So what I did here was I added a Celeste that's acting as a pluck to sort of give the melody a little bit more energy but still following along with its general flow. So rhythmically, it's not diverging or doing anything crazy or pulling your attention away from the main melody, but it is giving a new pulse to it. All three of those elements together now sound like this. Just helping giving it some motion without really trying to be the star of the show. Whereas this counter melody, is a bit more transformative and definitely a bit more rhythmically interesting. This could be something that you might wanna think about if you're feeling like your arrangement is a little bit lackluster and needing a little bit of bounce. Rather than trying to chop up your main melody, if you add a new element that is solely the bounce, then you can sort of mesh the two together and then create the bounce you're looking for. So the counter flute is continuing through and now we've got this pluck the violin's doing a spiccato. It just gives them this, it's like a short drag of the bow. And the counter pluck is gonna give it a little bit more bounce. You can hear it here. Maybe that felt a little bit weird without the drums. I promise it might make more sense in the full context of the beat. But one more thing I wanted to touch on is that while we do now have two different counter melodies that work independently with this flute part and with the main melody, I would definitely warn against stacking too many counter melodies, especially with something like a drill beat or like a type beat that you're making, because a lot of times with this type of music, your goal is to work with an artist that will then rap or sing on top of it. And if that's the case, you wanna make sure you're leaving a lot of space for the vocalist to come in because while the two elements sound good by themselves you can end up with something that sounds pretty busy with all of them together at the end here so just to hear all the melodic elements at the same time so you can hear how the Celeste and the pluck are hitting it kind of weird different times. Now we're getting into the ter territory of the stepping on the toes and that's exactly what you want to avoid. All that can come together with uh, the best attempt I can make at a UK drill drum break and uh, this is what you end up with. tried my best. Shout out for the request. I hope that was helpful. Um, I apologize if my drill beats aren't great. It is what it is. So for this third example, um, I sort of set out to start making like a contemporary soul type beat, I guess. Something like that maybe you could flip into a cool hip hop beat. I don't know. I thought I was going to make a soul beat and then this happened. 
but I still think it's a good way to demonstrate counter melodies. And this is a really good example of what I would consider a call and response. Um, so that conversational type of counter melody. So again, in the pink, we've got our main melody. In the purple, we've got our counter melody. This is a much simpler counter melody. And it's a really simple melody as well. We've got an ascension through three chords and then descending through three chords with a nice long sustain in between in the main melody. That's happening on keys, an organ, strings come in at the end, and then the bass is mirroring that as well. And then in the bells, we have the counter melody responding to the ascension and descension of the main melody. I don't really think I need to show you the individual components, but altogether, this is what this final track sounds like in a call and response counter melody. So yeah, I think that's all I've got for you guys. I hope you found this video at least a little bit helpful and I hope next time you're making something, you can spice it up just a little bit with a nice counter melody. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see me cover next. I'm happy to make any video you're interested in watching. I'm just trying to provide you the best value that I possibly can to help you become the best music creator that you can. So with that being said, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I'll be posting new videos just like this every single week. And yeah, that's all I got. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace.